Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you an OP Draconic Sorcerer Tempest Cleric Multiclass build guide from Baldur's Gate 3. Now, what makes this build so powerful is that the Draconic Sorcerer gets a boost to their lightning damage, which we can abuse with the Tempest Cleric. This is an extremely powerful build and can help you solo the game. Now, we're going to start off with the Sorcerer because this gives us Constitution Saving Throw Proficiency, allowing us to hold concentration on spells longer. As far as our cantrips go, we would definitely want to have Ray of Frost and Shocking Grasp for early game damage. Friends, if you're the face of the party, if not, I would take Firebolt and then Bone Chill. You can swap out for Minor Illusion or some combination of this. This will prevent healing, which can be nice in Act 3, but we can get it later on. For spells, I think that early on you definitely want to be using uh, Shield, because that's going to increase armor class by 5. And then Chromatic Orb is extremely strong, or Ice Knife. Magic Missile is also a very great spell, but we can take that at next level. And with the Draconic Sorcerer, we get the base armor class of 13. I've done another build on the Storm Sorcerer, which is extremely powerful, allows you to fly around. But we're going to go with the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, because it's going to give us a bit of extra boost to armor early on in the game. And then we're going to go with the blue uh, version of this, because we want to double our lightning damage. And we're going to take the Bronze heritage there to give us the fog cloud which is a really nice ability early on for, for blinding and heavily obscuring foes it has some great synergy with some other builds that you can have so we're going to take that witch bolt's not fantastic so I'd, i mean you can take it for early game and it can be upcast so either one of those actually i'll take that for this build uh, and then we're just going to remove those. As far as our ability scores, this is where the build gets interesting because we do have to have a bit of charisma in this build. So we do or we do have to have charisma alongside wisdom. So we're going to go with something like dumping our strength. Now, if you're late in the game, there's two ways we can go about this. If you're early game, in Act 1, you can get the Dexterity Gauntlet and dump your Dexterity. Otherwise, we're going to leave it at around 12. If you're late game, I would recommend getting the Constitution Amulet because it gives you advantage on Constitution saving throws and sets your Constitution to 23. This is late game for me, so I'm going to dump that. But if you want, you can also keep it around 12 to 14-ish. And then we're going to put the rest into our Wisdom here. So ideally, you can get it up to, up to around 14 would be ideal. Um, we could even go somewhere like this and create Strength of 10. If we're dumping our, our constitution as we in Act 3, we would go all in on our Wisdom, get that up there, and then we can put the rest into our Dexterity. So this is the late game version of this. Just wanted to give a few different ability scores because this is a very powerful build, but depending on where you're at in the game, it can be a little bit different. So we're gonna I'll be going over the gear options for this build at the end of this video, but for level 2, we're just going to take ourselves the Ice Knife. Or Magic Missile. Magic Missile is pretty good because we can use the Chromatic Orb and change its damage type. We get our Meta Magics here. Dan Distance Spell for increasing range 50%. And Twin Spell, which gets broken once we get Twin Haste. Now, as far as the uh, the level up here, we do get to uh, swap out spells at any time. So if you find that you're not using a spell, you can always take that off. At level 2, we get some really great options. Misty Step's a good one for mobility. It uses a bonus action. Since we're not the Storm Sorcerer, we can't fly around. Uh, Invisibility is okay. Hold Person is another great option. I think that this is the best option here. Just for early game crowd control, it helps a lot. And then we get our Quicken Spell, which spells a cast an action, cost a bonus action. Instead, allowing us to cast two spells. Very broken. So yeah, level 3 Sorcerer is quite good, because that's when you get your Sorcery Points in. The ability to cast two spells. Now, for our next cantrip, again, friends, if you're the face of the party. And then for our level two spell, we can actually go back and take Ice Knife. That's one consideration you can go with. Um, Scorching Ray is a nice damage dealer, but it's fire damage, so it doesn't fit this build perfectly. Misty Step is also a really great option, so I think Misty Step is the way to go here, unless you want a bit more damage. But Chromatic Orb can handle your damage for early game. Now, if you're the face of the party, or if you're a main player, you're going to probably want to have the hags here on your charisma to take it up to 18. And then here we would take our charisma up to 20. We'll just play pretend there, and that's 20. Um, this is not my... I used a different build for this, so that's why. But at level 3, we get some really nice spells. The first one we would definitely want to take is haste. Now, not everyone loves haste, but I just want to give a big shout out to it, because it gives you... If you twin haste, you can cast on yourself, so it's a free cast, you get another action, and then you can cast another spell, and then you can use your bonus action to cast three spells in a turn if you want, but you also will continue to have that for ten turns, and you can give it to another teammate. So if you have a fighter, they can attack three times, get another action, three more attacks, and then 
depending on your build, they may be able to attack more. So Twin Haste, very powerful, and it fits this build very well because we can set ourselves up to just cast a bunch. You can even cast it outside of combat if you put on turn-based mode. Now, Lightning Bolt is another really great option here. A lot of people like Fireball, but again, this builds Lightning Damage, so 8d6. And also, at this level, we get some nice boat boosts. So, uh, Elemental Affinity. When you cast a spell that deals damage to the type of your associated Draconic Ancestry, which is Lightning, you add your Charisma modifier to the damage. So, at 20, we'd have plus 5 to the damage, which is incredible. So, more damage flat out. And then the Elemental Affinity, we get resistance uh, to that if we use one sorcery point when we get hit with lightning. So that can be nice for just defensive purposes. Again, Lightning Bolt's the way to go here. Level 6, a big power spike for the Sorcerer. And then next level, we get to level 4 spell slots, which I think Ice Storm is by and far the best to go with. But we can also add in these, the Cleric here, and that's also a very good consideration. So... As far as the cantrips, keep the resistance, guidance, and sacred flame. Those are just great to have. Tempest Cleric will give us the Thunder Wave and the Fog Cloud that we didn't get from the other ancestry. And then Wrath of the Storm is your reaction. Uh, you can deal 2 to 16 lightning or thunder damage. So that's really good, just a free reaction. And uh, Talos for the destructive force of nature is a good deity to use, but really, whatever you want for roleplay purposes. Create Water is a big spell that we get out of here. So this gives us the ability to cast Water, and I would recommend having a Druid or a cleric, another Cleric alongside to be able to cast this early on until you get this. Healing Word is a bonus action. Heal is fantastic. Command is also another one. Command Grovel or Command Drop can be really, really useful. You can pick up enemies' weapons and they become useless. Guiding Bolt is a really good one, but Bless would be the best spell here. If you have someone else with Bless, I would recommend having that, because Guiding Bolt can give an attack roll advantage, which has some situational use as well as it's a good radiant damage early on. So we can go with something like that, but also Bless is a good ch choice there. The Tempest Cleric is really nice, so it uh, adds a lot to this. And also we get heavy armor with it, so we don't have to wear this outfit here. I just put this on for aesthetic purposes. Now, level 2 Cleric gives us the Destructive Wrath, and there's a few different options we can go with for this build. We can actually ride out all six levels of the Cleric, and that's going to give us the ability to use Call Lightning, which is a really good spell. We can also go with six, we can continue on with our Draconic Sorcerer to get more sorcery points. And we can make our way, up. if we could just go one level of Cleric and go all the way up to get Chain Lightning, which is a really nice spell. But we can also get Chain Lightning for other ways. If we got the Marco Heschker Spear, we can take it that way and use light, Chain Lightning with that. So it just depends. If you want to go Cleric all the way up to level six, because uh, we got the ability to max out damage, this is going to be a bit more tankier and. Uh, the sorcerer is going to be more more so focused on damage we're going to go with the sorcerer for this one because sorcerer is just i would say the best class cleric is also a really great class but yeah so that was my little rant on where you can go you can take six levels of cleric if you want because you'll get call lightning that way and uh, either way this build will work so i'm just going to personally take all levels in the sorcerer because it's just i find stronger for blasting purposes because we continue to get more sorcery points which is the main both classes are going to get level 6 spell slots. Uh, it just depends on your spells. Now, at level um, 8 here, we get another level 4 spell. And it's a little bit tricky because we could take counter spell, which is really nice. If you want to use your spell slots for that, if you're long resting often, take it. If not, confusion is a really great crowd control. I like to have a bard cast this personally, but uh, I'm going to go counter spell because it's just useful throughout the game. And then for our our uh, ability improvement we can take our dexterity up if we want to get a little bit of more initiative and uh, armor class but i personally think that alert is great also you can go with actor actor is actually really underrated alert will give us a plus five to initiative actor will give us a plus one to charisma so if this is not your your uh, main character you, c you could go with this or if you didn't if you're in like act three and you didn't have the hag's hair go with this we'll i'll take it for that purpose but plus five to initiative and can't be surprised it's broken so either one of these because this is our last feat um if you don't have the constitution amulet warcaster is good because you can get a reaction shock and grasp and if you have water set up that's double damage and you get advantage on constitution saving throws but we do get that from an item so alert actor or um you can go an ability improvement too if you want take your wisdom up if you really want to get one more wisdom which will give you one more spell from the cleric. You can go that route, but 
I think that actor is really good. Just get the charisma max out and get the proficiencies, which is just fun for your main character. Now, at level 5, Cone of Cold is extremely broken, too. We don't get that plus 5 to our uh, lightning, or to cold damage like we do with lightning, but an 8d6 of cold damage in a large fanning area, that will also create icy surfaces. It is pretty broken. Like, I really like Cone of Cold. If you have a bard, it's worthwhile taking bard at, uh, at their magical secrets at level 10, taking Cone of Cold, just to have another caster that can use a charisma-based cold damage in water. I've been able to clear many encounters just from, like, turn one, having a bard with that alongside this build, because create water is so good. I also like that mage hand, because you can drop a water bottle in your mage hand and pick it up and throw it to create water again. So it's a, like, very, very powerful build if you put all these pieces together. Hold Monster is an extremely powerful spell, too. I really like to take this at our level 10, because crowd control is huge. Alternatively, Fireball can be taken to, if you have Ice Storm, you can hit it with a Fireball after, and you can create uh, water after another Fireball, which is really nice, but I want to put Hold Monster because it's just super useful. Now, Subtle Spell to be able to cast spells when your Silence is really nice, and uh, also Careful Spell allies automatically succeed saving throws against spells that require them. I'm going to go with Subtle Spell because there is some times where being Silence can completely shut down this build, so we're going to go with that. You know, level 11, there's the one spell that we definitely have to take, and that's Chain Lightning. This is just straight up powerful. Six, at level uh, 6 spell slot, it deals 3 other enemies that are within 18 meters, and if they're wet, that's going to be upwards of 160 damage. This is extremely powerful. Globe of Invulnerability is another good one, but Chain Lightning is just straight up broken with this build, because you can deal a lot of damage. And then, at Draconic Sense, uh, Swords for level 11, we do get the ability to fly, and our fly uses movement speed, so that's quite nice. And, uh, yeah, this class is pretty broken. I think the one that I went with here with 11 levels of Sorcerer is great. So, I do have Light Armor on here. And our armor class is 19, which is not bad overall. But, I do think it's better to go with, like, a heavier armor that's going to give you a bit more defense. This is medium armor. It gives us a, a 23, which is nice. But, even if you go upwards of, like, the Helldusk armor, 21, um, Reaper's Embrace gives us 23. Something like that's very strong. So, you can go with those. And uh, I just went with the Moon Devotion robe because it looks good for this build. But even so, 19 armor class, if you don't want to use heavy armor, even though you do have the ability to. Gloves of the Bligger in Skies is really nice when you do lightning damage or radiant. They inflict two turns of reverberation, which can cause the target to go prone. And it also will uh, lower their uh, ability scores, so that's really nice too. Vivacious Cloak gives us eight temporary health points when casting within melee. The big focus of this build is Marco Hesker, but... You can, you can swap out any of these. This is not most optimal for gear. Like, Helm of Baldurin can be really, really nice, I guess. Um, we lost our, our we lost our armor when we put that one on. So, I guess, swapping that back out, we still keep our armor class from the Draconic Resilience. So, the yeah, Soul of Mask of Soul Perception there. If you go with the heavier op armor options, then you can go, like, Helm of Baldurin. And then take, like, Helldusk armor, and that gives us 26. And then there's a cloak that'll give us 20, 27. You can take the ring of plus one armor class to give us 28. And then here, the boots will also give us a nice plus one. So it can get pretty strong. I like Viconia's Walking Fortress for the shield because this gives us a, just advantage on saving throws against spells. Spell attack rolls against you at disadvantage. Warding bond. And when an opponent strikes you in the melee, you can use 2 to 8 force damage to knock it prone. And then Marka Heshker. This is a big focus of this build. So, with Marka Heshker, we can go ahead here and use Arcane Battery to be able to cast ourselves any of our spells. So, we can go here and use that, and Arcane Battery will cast us a free Chain Lightning. Amazing. We can also use Koreska's Favor and go to Chain Lightning, which will add our proficiency bonus to our damage. And then, we, which is just, we already have that, which is crazy. But we can also go with the Cold one, which gives Cone of Cold for free and Ice Storm for free. But with Bolts of Doom, we can cast this on ourselves, and um, this will give us resistance for some reason. But um, then we get another Chain Lightning. So you can go Chain Lightning and just blast. <laughs> and then with the uh, Arcane Battery the next turn, you can also blast that. And then you can use it yourself again afterwards. You can also go with a Quicken spell and then use something like Chain Lightning. It gets really, really broken, because the amount of damage you can deal if you have water set up is next level. So, create water. You can also upcast this if you see, like, a good group of targets. Don't be afraid to upcast it. It is 
best to have a couple people that can cast water. Like if you have a druid who goes into wild shape, get them to upcast a create water. Or you can even use another cleric. I like to have two lightning users and maybe even a coal user on the team because you can create water and then just double damage from everyone. And that gets very broken. Also, if you go with a, another Tempest Cleric that has the uh, the reaction to be able to deal maximum amount of damage, it gets pretty crazy. Plus, we deal damage to any attackers too with our Lightning. Uh, so this is really a very powerful build in Baldur's Gate 3. The Draconic Sorcerer is very similar to the Storm Sorcerer and it pairs well with the Tempest Cleric. So if you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.